Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another cheap and easy repair. Uh, today we are going to look at how to diagnose and repair, replace a ballast for a fluorescent light fixture. As you can see there, I got a light out, and uh, I, I know in this case that, that it was a ballast because all four bulbs went out at once. It's a four-bulb fluorescent light fixture. Uh, the the you if your bulbs go out one at a time. <coughs> Uh, or they got black rings around the end, it could be your bulbs, but if all four bulbs go out at the same time, then that is likely your ballast. And on some of the older fixtures, even on the four bulb fixtures, the four bulb fixtures, they had, they had two, two bulb ballasts in them. So if two of your bulbs go out at the same time in a four bulb fixture, sometimes it's still the ballasts. Uh, in a two bulb fixture, you'll also have a ballast. Actually, just about every fluorescent fixture has a ballast, uh, cause they gotta adjust the voltage. Uh, well, so first of all, I know that the ballast is a problem in this one because all four bulbs went out at the same time. That is, uh, the first thing you want to do when starting your repair is turn off the power to the light. That is most important. As always, safety first, turn off the power to the light. Uh, if it's a three-way switch and you can't see the other, ac other accesses to turn the power on and off, put some tape on it. Put a note on it. Uh, just make sure people know not to turn that switch on, and I'm going to have another safety thing, just in case they ignore that, uh, just a little bit later on. Uh, that there is the replacement ballast. I've blurred the name out, but, uh, on top of it, you will see the wiring diagram. They're usually written out really simply. Even a novice can look at those and understand what it's saying, uh, most of the time, even if you don't know how to read a compl complex wiring diagram. Either way, I'm going to tell you how to wire a four-bulb fixture. And I'll probably slip in how to wire a two bulb, a two bulb ballast fixture too, because it's, it's, it's very simple. Uh, so yeah, you take, you're gonna need a ballast, and you're gonna need one of those things right there, of course. I think we've all seen one of those. Uh, because standing on your tiptoes just ain't cutting it. And your, this is the tool I most likely recommend. Uh, most ballasts are mounted in place with some kind of a nut or a screw. Uh, and, uh, that, a good, a good six-way screwdriver, four-way screwdriver with a two different socket sizes on each end. Uh, it, you will fit almost all of them, except in this case, of course, because because this one had to be a pain. I actually had to get a different size socket because the nut was just slightly larger than the socket size on my four-way screwdriver. Uh, but most of the time, a four-way, I mean, a, a six-way screwdriver will have everything you need. So, uh... There's the, there's the light fixture with the cover hanging down. You never want to do that, especially on these type of covers uh, that wrap around the edge, because they are impossible to find. You cannot find the right size for them. So if that thing falls and breaks, it, it, you're going to have to replace the light fixture, because you can't find the right size. Lowe's has a couple sizes. Uh, Home Depot has a couple different sizes, but... I have never seen one, I've never been able to find one that fits, especially on these bigger, older ones. Okay, now in this picture you see the uh, the bulbs, they are black on the ends. Usually that's a sign that the bulbs could be bad or could be getting ready to go bad. But once again, as I said before, all four bulbs went out at the same time, so uh, I knew it was the ballast. And because it's a four-bulb fixture and they all four went out at the same time, and because of the wiring I can see... I can tell that it's a T, oh, and because of the size of the bulbs, it's a T8 fixture. Now, there's two types of, there's a, there, there was a little fluorescent war. Uh, T12 was the old type, uh, and apparently they are more harmful to the atmosphere, and the T8s are, and use more electricity, and the T8s, uh, have less mercury in them, and they're better for the at in atmosphere or something, I don't know, and they use less power. So they're a little greener, so T8s are the are what everything is coming in now. You can still buy a T12 ballast, if, but uh, honestly, a T12 ballasts are such a pain to wire, uh, and the wiring is a lot more complicated than a T8. I, I, I recommend just switching over to a T8 fixture. Uh, so uh, this is a little more complicated repair than I usually do. Uh, you want to take all the bulbs out, and in the center, between all four bulbs, uh, two bulbs if it's a two bulb fixture, uh, is going to be what I call the speed bump, but it's really just the channel which all the wiring runs down, uh, and those usually snap in place in many vast and various ways. You're just going to have to look at it and see how they snap in place. 
Man, I have dirty fingers that day. Yeah, you'd think I'd be a little more careful when I was taking pictures of my hand. Uh, but underneath, here's a picture of the old ballast. It is a, indeed a T8. You can tell it's skinny. It's uh, it's only got uh, let's see, uh, two, uh, it's only got eight wires coming out of it. Uh, the old T12 ballasts were different and uh, had more wires. You would see a lot more wires underneath that hood if it were a T12. I'm going to get you guys a T12, and I'm going to do a second tutorial of this changing a T12 to a T8 once I uh, end up getting a call and having to repair one. Uh, right here you can see the wiring on the common side. Uh, the common side of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, ballast, and on this end is the uh, powered side. Now, uh, this is going to confuse you a little bit because uh, the actual power lines were coming out from the ceiling on the common side, but uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the power goes up the colored wires first, and the yellow wires are the common wires where the power comes back. So you all electricity wants to make a circuit. You want to make a circuit. And it's going to go up one side and come down the light bulb and then go back the other. Because uh, electricity wants to get to ground, but I'm not going to go into teaching you about electricity. I'm going to teach you about changing a ballast. This here is the black wire. That's your main power wire. That's coming in. Uh, that is the first thing you want to disconnect while the lights are off. First thing you want to do is turn the switch off. Then when you get to the black wire, you disconnect it, and you put the wire nut back on, just like you see there. And that way you can assure yourself that the, uh, that the uh, power coming to that fixture is shut off. You see right there the, the uh, white wire coming down through the ceiling uh, into the fixture is the the black and white wire that are that come out of there those are your main power wires that's your that's your main power your main common uh going back and uh that's that that's how you can be sure that that black wire is the wire you're looking for okay now this is a picture of the blue and red wires like i said those are your power wires going up to feed the power to your bulbs uh this is the old one of course I'm, i still haven't changed it out and on the other side, this is a bad picture of it because I didn't show the jumper wire. I was planning on showing the jumper wire there, but uh, basically those are quick connects. And uh, they are stuck in, the wires are going into quick connects, which I'll talk about a little bit here in a second. And the, uh, the, uh, the little things on the end, the connectors, where the bulbs hook in, I call them tombstones. Because uh, they look kind of like tombstones. They come in many shapes and... But they all kind of could, you know, if you blurred them out a little bit and wrote R.I.P. on them, and they would kind of look like upside-down tombstones. Uh, a, a co-worker of mine called them tombstones once, and, and the name stuck in my head. But anyway, there's a jumper on the yellow side. I'll just have to remind you again later. So what you want to do is sometimes those will come out with a gentle tug. If they don't come out with a gentle tug, uh... Don't jerk on them because you'll jerk the light fixture right out of the ceiling. I've done it once or twice. And so if they don't come out with a gentle tug, look for a tab. Usually there's a little sheet metal tab that's holding them in place. You can get a flathead screwdriver up in there and flatten that out, and usually then they'll come out with a gentle tug. Uh, you want to remove the wire from the quick connect by uh, grabbing the tombstone and grabbing the wire with your other hand and then twist twist back and forth and gently pull loose. I do not recommend snipping them off and splicing the wires together with wire nuts just because uh, you, there's just so many. You're hooking up eight wires. You're going to end up missing one. Uh, one's going to come loose. Uh, it, you're causing yourself more trouble than you, than you need to if you're just splicing and wiring it than just gently pulling the things loose from the, disc, the, the quick connects. Those quick connects are sometimes a pain in the butt. To get loose. Sometimes they just don't want to let go. So I understand the frustration, but uh, just just keep twisting it, keep gently pulling it, and uh, it will come loose eventually. Here it is loose, and uh, when, once you have the tombstone unwired, you want to examine the back of it, because the back of these things, the old ones especially, are made of cardboard, and sometimes they're punctured. You don't want the wire to stick through that thing. Uh, and touch the metal, the the, the metal, uh, the sheet metal of the uh, actual, the actual uh, frame of the light fixture, because then you'll get sparks, screams, and uh, crying. And uh, that, so always examine the back, the old cardboards, make sure they're in good shape. Uh, and if they're not, 
a little electrical tape or something back there just to reinforce it. Make sure that wire doesn't touch the back when you stick it back through when you rewire the new one and stick the new wire in the quick connect. Okay, there's a picture of the one side of the light fixture where I have pulled all of the wires loose. This is the red and blue side where I have taken every single wire loose from the tombstones and put them back in place. Uh, that's the you, It looks nice and clean, and that's the way you want it. On the other side, this is the picture of me having removed all but the yellow jumper wires. Now, if you look closely at this picture, you'll see that the jumper wires have, uh, I mean, that the tombstones on the right and the tombstones on the left have jumper wire. Now, those... You, you only have two yellow wires that come out of the back side of, I mean, you have two common wires that come out of the back side of the new T8 ballasts. One's going to go to one side, and one's going to go to the other side, and then that jumper's over. See, the common side's going to feed all back together, and uh, you, you, you have that single jumper. It'll show it on the wiring diagram. Uh, it's real simple, and if you're changing a T8 ballast to a T8 ballast, you're already going to have that jumper there, so you might as well leave it in place. And in this case, the jumper was already there, and I did leave it in place. So, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through that again. And as you can see, I've got both the black and white wires still capped off safely. Uh, so even if someone turns on the switch, they, they, they won't, they won't shock me. All right, so first thing, you want to unwrap the ballast, separate the wires. Uh, this particular type of ballast has a yellow wire separated per side. So you got uh you got your two reds and your red side yellow and you got your two blues and your blue side yellow. Uh I'm going to just call them by their colors instead of their electric terminology just because uh you know I'm this is a quick and easy tutorial this is not an electronics tutorial. All right. So you want to hang the ballast on the side of the fixture closest usually they have two ports uh these old ones do anyway. Uh you want to hang the 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 new ballast on the side uh, closest to the red and blue side, because the red and blue wires are shorter. Uh, the yellow wires can reach all the way across the fixture, but the red and blue ones cannot. So you got to make sure to hang the ballast on the side you plan to hang the uh, powered side of the light fixture. You plan to wire the powered side of the light fixture. And there you go. I real simple did blue, blue, red, red. Blue on the left, red on the right. Uh, and uh, you, you make sure to keep your yellow separate there. It, it's not an absolute necessity, but uh, I mean, they will, it will still work the other way, but uh, I like to be anal. If they separate out the yellow wire, then they did it for a reason. Uh, so, and on the other side, the blue side yellow and the red side yellow are matching on their appropriate sides, and then, of course, jumpered to their uh, twin there. Uh, the uh, uh, There's the picture of it all all wired up. Uh, so, uh, in this case, we have, uh, I believe it is, I'm looking at it on a tiny picture, I'm sorry about this, we have blue, blue, red, red on those tombstones on that side, and then on the other side that we will have the blue side, the blue side jumper, then the blue side yellow, and, uh, nearest to forest, of course, and then you would have the, the, the red side yellow, and then the red side jumper, uh, nearest to farthest from this vantage point. Uh, then you put the put the little uh, speed bump back in the middle, you put the bulbs back in, and before you put the cover back on, make sure to test it out because if you got a loose wire or something, you didn't hook something in right, uh, then you uh, are going to have to pull that cover back off, and every time you take those covers off, you risk breaking them. You don't want to break them uh, because they are so very hard to replace. You see here, I had mine stacked kind of carelessly against the ladder. If I had shifted the ladder wrong, I probably would have broken that, and I would have would have been frustrated with it. Uh, also, as a quick safety tip, always before you turn the power back on, uh, give all of your quick connects a gentle tug just to make sure that they're in there solid. And also give all of your wire nut connections a gentle tug before you put everything back together just to make sure they're good and connected. Uh, hopefully this helped you out. The uh, the the uh I did not discuss the two bulb fixture, which is uh kind of annoying because I meant to. Uh it's basically the exact same thing except for you're gonna only have uh the you're only gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six yeah, six wires. No, five wires coming out. You're gonna have a black and white, black goes to black, white goes to white. Uh 
you're going to have the yellow on one side, which is going to jump her to the other side, and you're going to have two reds or two blues. I can't remember which one because we don't have a lot of two-bulb two fixtures at work. I hope this was helpful, and uh, this is one of my longer tutorials. If, you, if it was, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, and uh, check out my book, uh, The Dreamer's Nights, on Amazon.com. It's a dark fantasy, uh, kind of an occult fiction novel. It's uh, the, the cover seems scary. It's not really a terribly scary book, though. Uh, give, it a, uh, give it a chance. It's available on paperback and Kindle. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, be safe with electricity.